walking down the same path that you did. Yeah, but he still you had to keep a balance. It took you 35 years to come on the straight and narrow. Your child will have the same challenges that you will have. So, show that love and affection to your children. If they do something good, praise them. Show them love. The message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was once sitting and he was kissing one of his grandchildren and there was a Bedouin there. And this Bedouin said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Oh Messenger of Allah, you kiss children? He said, yes. He said, don't you kiss children? He said, no, I have 10. I have 10 and I've never kissed any of my children. And the Messenger of Allah said, Awa amliku lak. He said, is there anything in the religion of Allah for you? Is there anything I can do for you? And Allah has removed rahmah from your heart. What was he not doing? He wasn't kissing his child. You know, he spoke about Umar. Everybody knows Umar radiallahu anhu, the big guy. When Umar radiallahu anhu was Amir al-Mu'mineen, and, he, and one of his governors came in and Umar was playing with a child and he was kissing him. And this governor said, Oh, Amir al-Mu'mini, you kiss children, you play with children. He said, yes. He said, don't you? He said, no, me. I'm the man. I walk in and everything's locked down. When I walk in the house, nobody moves. Even the fish stop swimming. <laughs> Umar radiallahu anhu demoted him from governorship. He said the person who's heavy on his family, the person who is harsh on his family cannot have a status in the deen of Allah. <laughs> Thirdly, there's a few points, but I'm talking about community. There's a singular thing, inshallah, you can go to the home. I'm talking about as a community. Thirdly, <coughs> listen guys, you need to respect your ulama. I am not exonerating every mole before the every fault. Understand? But you need to respect your ulama. Your ulama ain't your paddies. I'm not sure they still make paddy jokes. Do they still make paddy jokes? No, not much. Okay, so when we grew up, the paddies were the butt of every joke. Paddies are the Irish. So when you made a joke, you made a joke about a paddy. Paddy did this, a paddy did this. And I thought paddies were stupid. I honestly grew up thinking, paddy? Until I met a few paddies and I thought they were, besides Conor McGregor, they were all alright. <laughs> but I believed that paddies were stupid. Now, if your culture, and you know the cultures I'm speaking about, not all cultures, if the Maldives is the butt of your every single joke, you don't joke about professors, you don't joke about doctors, you don't joke about lawyers, but you respect them. But the Maldives are the butt of your jokes. And then you expect your children to become dindar. They're going to be dindar. You look at the community, even in this subcontinent, where the community respect the Maldives. Look at how much religiosity they have and how much your community has. I don't have to take any names of which communities. The communities know which communities they are. So if you are taking a mick out of people who represent the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then how do you expect your children to respect the deen of Allah? If you are not interested in teaching your children about the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then your children will not be connected to Allah. And these are a few things there's many other things that we could mention here, but I think age is catching up with me anyway. My brothers and sisters, we need to invest in our children. We need to make sure that we understand that this favor of Iman and the favor of Islam is the greatest favor that we have. For our personal benefit, we 
need to read the Quran every day. <coughs> we need to have our azkar, which connects us as a person on a personal level, which strengthens our iman. One day, the Prophet sallallahu was sitting with the Sahaba, and a great amount of wealth came. No, from Bahrain, never had so much wealth ever come into the Muslim world as much as this time. <coughs> And the Sahaba are coming and Prophet is taking and taking, taking. Some people, Abbas radiallahu took so much that he couldn't even carry it. So he had to take some out. And there is a Sahabi called Rabi ibn Malik al-Aslami sitting next to the Prophet sallallahu And the Messenger of Allah said to him, take your Rabi. He said, no, I don't want. He said, take. He said, I don't want. He said, okay, ask, what do you want? He said, oh, Messenger of Allah, I only want one thing. I want to be with you in Jannah. He said, I want to be with you in Jannah. The Prophet said, didn't say to him, guaranteed. He said, he said, do plenty of sajdas. Pray plenty of nafil salah. And you will enter with me into Jannah. You will enter with me in Jannah. Imagine with the, with the message of Allah in Jannah. Make the message of Allah your role model. MashaAllah, our man Andrew Tate has just embraced Islam. May Allah give him guidance. But yet your role model. Let me tell you this straight. These guys are not, some of them are good to a certain degree. But don't make them a mirror momini. And my friends from Australia, some of the shiukh were saying, hopeless and these guys when they came last time, they said, when Khabib went to uh, Australia, he said, honestly, this guy is so popular that if he took bay of people, he would become a mirror momini. <laughs> because everybody was around him. But don't take Khabib as your ultimate role model. Look at Rudiger. Yeah, Rudiger is a practicing Muslim, he speaks about Muslim causes, but when it came the other day, a hand over their mouth, Rudiger was, was with the Germany, with the Golden Cup uh, football team. He did exactly the same, because peer pressure. So you make a Rudiger, you're a middle woman, you know, I love Chelsea, man. No, you, you know, you don't play with Chelsea anymore. But my sons were telling me, they were very upset. But I said, look, what he's done now, you should be happy. Don't make these people your role models. Yeah, they're good. They have some good elements. Khabib has, mashallah, some very good uh, principles. You know, people like, oh, Andrew Tate become a Muslim. My role model, Andrew Tate. Because you agree with three or four of his things, doesn't mean, you know, he's become a middle mommy. Jordan Peterson. Ah, oh, middle mommy need Jordan Peterson. If only embrace Islam. You know, it's interesting, you know. For some people, this would be totally abstract. You won't even understand who Jordan Peters is. What is the more we talking about dunya in the masjid? But this is the problem. See, you agree with a few of his, their things, and then you take them wholesale. And then when Jordan Peterson speaks condescendingly to the Muslim community, you see all the comments. Muslims say, yeah, yeah, Amir al yeah, mashallah, you know, our, 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 our leader. And then when he walks into Al-Aqsa, you gonna do like he walked in. Then when he goes to praise Israel and Jerusalem, then what you gonna do? So as Abdullah bin Masood radiallahu anhu said, he said, make those the Sahaba your role model because only trusted those who are dead. Because only those who are dead are safe from fitna. And our ultimate role model is the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Everybody else, Zahir Mahmood comes, they go, no guarantee for anybody. And you will be happy with your life. So finally, I want to say, listen, brothers and sisters, inculcate it within yourself, inculcate within your children the love of Allah and His Rasul. <laughs> because the Prophet wasallam was once about to lead the salah, and a man came in, and he said, "A message of Allah." When is the hour? When is the final hour? When is the world going to finish? The Messenger of Allah began his salah. He finished his salah. And he said, Man is He said, who asked that question? He said, me or Messenger of Allah? This is very interesting. The Messenger of Allah didn't answer his question, but he was interested in it. What? Forget about when the hour is. He said, Ma Why have you prepared for the hour? 
need to know when it's going to occur. If you're ready for it, you're ready for it. He said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, I don't have much fast and I don't much have salahs. I don't have much of these fast and salahs. But one thing I do know is that I love Allah and His Rasul. And that doesn't mean that he didn't pray and he didn't fast, meaning he didn't pray and fast like the other Sahaba. The Prophet said, Al Mar'u Ma'man Hab. If you love Allah and His Rasul, you will be with Allah and His Rasul on the day of judgment. Anas ibn Malik anhu says, after Imam, the greatest happiness we had that we, we knew that we would be with the Messenger of Allah in the hereafter. So brothers, elders, sisters, we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve our Imam. We make, because you know, our Iman is honestly being challenged every single day now. Something innocent as the World Cup, and you bring your hegemony, LGBTQ into it. What has football got to do with LGBTQ? What's Qatar? You know why Qatar? Listen for this reason. Because Qatar is a Muslim country. Simple. No other reason. Qatar is 21 times smaller than the UK. You know, out of the football teams, I'm not sure how many football teams, but 13 out of the World Cup football teams outlaw same-sex marriage. 13! Amongst them is Japan, amongst them is South Korea, don't go that far. Amongst them is Serbia, Croatia, Poland, European countries. I like to see you wearing your one love armbands. The next time you play Poland, you know they ain't gonna take it. But you know, Muslims push over. Muslims are a pushover. So even in things like football, we have the LGBTQ and the you know, it's pushed, the hegemony is pushed because. Anyway, let me just leave it to this. It's all about Iman. Strengthen your Iman. Strengthen your principles in deen. Be brave for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Trust in Allah. Invest in your children, your akhirah. And inshallah, everything will be fine. Everything will be fine. But that effort needs to be done. That effort needs to be burned. And I honestly, wallahi, I believe in the UK, we are very unique. Wallahi. This is not just big in UK. I traveled the world. You know, giving talks. Everybody marvels at the Dawah in UK. I'm telling you. America, North, North America, Europe have nothing compared to the UK. You go to Africa, they all talk about, oh, this, oh, this is happening in UK. This Dawah is happening in UK. They marvel. Good. So, you know, we live in a global village. You go to India, some continent, but I repeat the fact that history does not wait for anybody. History does not wait for anybody. And this is why, alhamdulillah, wallahi, it gives me great pleasure to see these young ulama, mashallah, who are sacrificing, who are making this effort, who are investing. Please support them morally. Invest morally, financially, invest in your institutes, invest in your imams. I'm gonna finish on this, yeah? None of these Maulvis told me to say this, yeah? Committee member, Jamia, Betayan, none of them told me to say this. Imam should be in the masjid, you should have somebody here all the time. You should have two or three, uh, you should have offices, you don't need this much space for namaz. You can open your offices, make the back offices, people who, who, who need guidance, people who got marital problems, people who got drug problems, people who got issues with their parents, people who got issues with their children. The Imam should be there. And then don't make him, don't pay him peanuts please. Now is there ikhlas? Wallahi, I say this honestly and I say this as a thing. There's only one group of people who can work for peanuts and that's the Maldives. I'm telling you, nobody else does it. Look, look, look all the things that we do at Sufa. Nobody will, they want a guy will come for a couple of hours and think, nobody will do it for that price that the Maldives would do it. May Allah reward them for their ikhlas. But you know, they got children, they want to send their children tuition, their wife wants to go for Umrah as well, like your wife wants to go for Umrah. Yeah? You have 40,000 pounds, 50,000 pounds, and you want, and you want uh, Mulan Saab to live on Hikayatul Sahaba. 
So invest. You don't need huge masajid. You need huge people. Invest. Nobody got hidayat through a carpet. Nobody got hidayat through a chandelier. Nobody ever got hidayat through a minaret. People get guidance through other people. Invest in people. This is the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Invest in your children. So finally, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Imam Shafi rahmatullah alayhi said, oh Allah, you gave us Islam and Iman and we didn't ask you for it. Now we ask you, Allah, take us from this dunya with Iman and Islam. Give us the tawfiq to leave this dunya that you are pleased with us. I make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow your community to grow from strength to strength. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you unity. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you love and muhabba. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you time to invest in your children, in your elders, respect your elders. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us united in dunya and reunited generous for those. Barakallah feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.